Hi everybody and welcome back to SES Coffee Break. Again, we're with Pat Boulder from Hornbill. Hi Pat. Hi David. And nice to see you back again. Still sunny here, which is great. And big leap up from last from last one. We both have coffee, Pat. Which is, I think that's I a good move. Have. <laughs> so that's a good move. Now, we've been talking over the last uh, group of sessions. Hopefully some of the listeners have seen those about collaborations, effective collaborations, some of the challenges, some of the thoughts. This one is about the pitfalls of collaboration. Again, section five in the, in the, uh, in the uh, publication that's just come out, watching out for the pitfalls in collaboration. So you mentioned in there, which I think is really cool, destination applications, which is pretty cool. So it's sort of back to email, right? Yeah, being driven back to, um, back to email again, um, which, which I think is it's still a prominent thing, I think changing that culture of got to open email, you know? Yeah, it's not 1990 anymore, you know? What, and what I'm really interested in, I think, is, is what you're seeing in relation to that. So what are you seeing in relation to, because you mentioned it in there, the convergence of collaboration tools and practices around collaboration as well and collaboration tools. What are you seeing, Pat? Well, I suppose you've got, um, I mean, <laughs> things like Zoom, uh, Microsoft Teams, have got an awful lot of airplay. Uh, I was talking to a customer the other day that said their Teams usage went up by 8,000% <laughs> in the space of two weeks. Wow. But, um, and, and it's really useful, especially especially with Teams, you know, you've got your ability to do your videos, you can collaborate on documents. Uh, we started using it a while ago just to get a sense of what it kind of does. It sends me back kind of, I've been collaborating on this, I've been, using email for this length of time. Mm. But of course, with it, in our case, it's skewed because we don't use Teams, we use our own tool to do it. So uh, it's not giving me a, a true sense of, of reality. But um, I think what you are seeing is collaboration going even further in that um, when you first see it, it looks like magic. Documents now don't exist as a document, but as in little bits. So you can have people working on bits of the document that, together and stuff like that. And that's, that's all kind of, a new way of working for people. It's a bit weird to get used to it at first, but, but it is a, a new way of working. But the destin application, destination application piece, yeah. that comes from the fact that if you look at adoption of collaboration, I remember Yammer a few years ago went crazy for a while and you know now you've got Slack <laughs> and stuff. It's all well and good. They provide a, a structure around what you should be doing. And in certain environments, like developers will use Slack without a shadow of a doubt. But... The true power of collaboration comes when collaboration exists inside the tool where you're already doing your work. Mm. So in, in our case, the service desk, you know, in, in we'll say for home bill, uh, collaborative spaces, we're discussing other stuff, but in our service desk, someone just at mention, so at someone's name and pull someone into a conversation who might be a subject matter expert, I'd like your thought on this, please. That their response gets actually listed within the actual conversation itself. Someone can like it. Lots of people can like it and validate it. And what happens is that content kind of moves up the stack as being kind of useful content that people like. And then that's available there for everyone to search. So it's, it's a different mindset. Uh, but that destination application thing, if it's not where people go to work, it's not where they, they do their work, it's a sideshow. So you collaborate over here and your work is done here. It'll never stick. If you want to get collaboration to stick, make it a destination application. So inside whatever tool you're using to do your work, that's where the collaboration should be happening. Yeah, I, I like that a lot because, you know, I think still people fall foul of, first thing they do when they come into a work environment is open email, first thing, you know. Yeah. I think, I think you know, as we see maybe the, the I, think, I think I read not so long back, well, a while back now, by 2025, um, 75% of the workforce will be Y-Gen. So I think we're, we're relying on Y-Gen and Z-Gen to change those habits. And, it'll, you know, it's taking a long time. And I'm wondering if we can make those habits, you know, or change those habits a little bit quicker. We've already talked about maybe in some of the other ones how you could do that. What about, you know, if you look at some of the practice, what I found, we went, we went to um, 365 probably about 18 months, maybe two years ago now. And I... I tell you what, it's been a, a trans total change, right? Total change of um, of how we how we work, much much more collaborative, and, and something I think you don't actually view certainly me. You've been screaming up for years around email, getting rid of it, right? Um, what about what about defining how to use the tool? You, you know, is it is it simply you put something in there, you leave people to find out themselves, or do you put some 
some, some kind of guidance, communication guidance on how to use Teams, how to use SharePoint, how to use Yammer, how to use the different, various different sort of bits of a collaboration platform for the most effective outcomes. What do you think about that? Well, it depends on the actual tool itself that you're using and, and the interface you're using, because uh, what's the saying? Uh, uh, an interface is a bit like a joke. If you have to explain it, it's not very good. Uh, so, um, I mean, in the vast majority of cases, when we roll stuff out to customers, we would expect them to be able to pick it up and start to use it just after a five minute kind of familiarization, familiarization exercise. Um, some of the stuff that we do now, just um, so we do something called continuous deployment, mm -hmm. which just basically means our developers are working on stuff all the time and new updates just get done. Uh, customers don't really worry about them, they just happen in the background and stuff. Mm -hmm. But the important bit is that you'll have a little Harry Hornbill fella pop up and say, oh, oh, Hey, here's some new stuff that you weren't using before. So while there might be a little bit of a, a kind of a need to familiarize yourself to begin with. When you get these incremental updates all the time, there's no big shift between one version and the next. It's just little bits that get added all the time. But you keep getting the, the, the latest and the newest stuff fed to you. And that's kind of the more agile approach that I think you, you'll see happening now, certainly within, um, within business environments. Uh, I think the whole idea of kind of old tools and upgrade processes and stuff like that will probably disappear as a result of the current crisis. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of, you know, it's funny, Pat, because I think, you know, so coming from practitioner land six years ago into where we are now, knowing that, knowing some of the challenges of the old and, and seeing the the promises of the new, I think that that shift of of everything we've talked about over the last number of videos, everything we've we've seen in the change from, you know, uh, idle version three to idle four. The shift towards value creation and, and co collaboration, the DevOps sort of movement, the agile movement. I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm wondering how much, how much that's going to impact the rate of change. Because we've been, a lot of people have been talking about this stuff for years, haven't they? You need to think about because it's going to be better. What do you think is going to happen, right? So we're going to, we're going to push forward maybe to the end of 2020. What, what do you think many organisations would be? Uh, will look like then in relation to what we've talked about now with the SaaS stuff as well. What do you what do you think some of the clever smart organisations are going to look like? Um, I think that it, it depends on how they tackle this, but there will be a number of different waves. I think for the, the path to the new normal, if you like, the first one is probably where we are now at the tail end of it. Mm -hmm. So we're still stuck with lockdown, and it's all about survival right now, just trying to keep things running as they were. Mm -hmm. But at some point in time, we need to start kind of looking at the next big problem for business is how do we kind of survive this? So there, there will be cost cuts, there will be tightening up, there will be efficiencies, and you know, IT will once, once again be asked to drive more efficiency. Um, but it's where that efficiency is actually driven. It's not within IT, it's in other parts of the organization where it's actually going to deliver the most value. Yeah. Certainly within IT, agile working practices is something that can readily be adopted. I remember talking to Great Ormond Street Hospital a while ago and they were saying we had something like 15 to 20 people who used to meet up in a room once a week for 90 minutes to basically discuss changes, stuff like that. Now the last CAP meeting is like we don't do that anymore. We all do it all virtually using a Kanban style board. So you know we only meet up when there's absolutely things that are huge and need to be discussed face to face. So I think you'll see a lot more of that as well. Um, but the idea of sequentially doing things like we have incident and problem and change and stuff like that, to some extent, we need a bit of a rethink. Uh, I, I think it was Kaimar was being interviewed by Bartosh a little while ago, and we asked him for advice for CF, CIOs. And Kaimar said, uh, focus on the principles of service management and give people the opportunity to kind of work within the boundaries of those principles and don't get tagged down by, um, by a, a particular practice or a set of processes or anything like that because you'll be far more adaptable to change. It'll be easier, it'll be cheaper, and be far less painless to change. And I think that's what we're going to see. I'm not saying ITIL is going away. It shouldn't. But what I'm saying is light touch on the process side and more kind of trust in people. And, of course, coming back to the collaboration piece, if you're sharing your work openly, you're working out loud, people become aware of what's going on. So, so all of a sudden, all of those challenges you have with one process output into another process input begin to disappear because it just happens in the course of dialogue. That's, that's some great advice. I like that. And I know that the forward thinking people, I think, I think 
people, the forward thinking guys thinking about things like, you know, we, we know where we are, we know the end point, what we want. We, these are the parameters, go and be creative within the realms of yep. what, I think that, you know, for me, service is creative. Whatever industry you're in, service, and, and when you've got, you know, products, capability, uh, when you've got um, services that you're delivering, the, the best ones are the most creative, the way that they put together, the, the value that they add, and, and also how they support it. So I tell you what, that would be, that would be the nirvana for me, is exactly what you just said. You know, very clear parameters, a start and a finish. Just, just go and be yep. creative. You know? Do your thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, the thing is, a lot of people say, oh, we lose visibility, but the old kind of command and control mm -hmm. hierarchies don't necessarily like that. But, again, this collaboration, this concept of working out loud, you will not be invisible. Your work will not be invisible. It's open to, you publish what you're doing, you know. So if I, for example, say I'm preparing a document that's uh, like the last smart guide, what I'll do is I'll basically circulate it, just mention them within Hormel and just say, look, here's some of the stuff I've done recently. They can choose to edit that document if I give them the rights. They can choose to comment on it. I'll get some ideas from other people. I'll have a developer correcting my grammar, <laughs> which is a crazy situation. But, you know, you, you find people are good at other stuff and you get great, great ideas and input from everywhere. But there's a big difference between go and do something or go do something and make it visible to everyone, make it transparent, allow people to see what you're doing and comment and post on it. Yeah, that's good. I like that a lot. And maybe just to close, you know, I think we talked about it before uh, briefly. I think I, I really like what they've done with that. I like what they've done with the guiding principles. I really yeah. think they're great and how you can apply those in almost any situation, including what we've talked about today, the how we collaborate and how teams and, and, and business collaborate. Yeah. You mentioned in the report as well, the final thing is, is linearity. So lin linearity for the moment is on pause. What, what does that mean? Finally, what, is, what does that mean for permanency? What is lin this current sort of linear thing that we've got, right? We know what it, you know what it is. Got a call. Yeah. Can I fix it? Pass it on. They've got an SLA. I've got an OLA. Bum, 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 bum. All this linear stuff. Yeah. And you talk about swarming as well, yeah? So that's we that's about, what I was yeah? just about to mention, yeah. Yeah, okay. So is, is linearity, do you think it's dead? By this time next year, by the end of 2021, is linearity going to be no more? Uh, I think there is some acceptance that linearity works when you're actually defining a process, mm -hmm. you're defining an end-to-end -end thing. It's easy to write down and put on paper. But um, everything that I've been describing is about having, uh, working in a collaborative environment and working out loud means that to some extent you can shortcut some of that linearity because you're not waiting to get a result in this silo before it moves on to the next silo. Actually, all the silos are connected. They're all talking to each other. Mm. And as a result of actually doing that, then linearity is not, it certainly moves at a faster pace. So you don't drop from the end of one queue into the top of another and wait till that comes down to the level of priority where it needs to be dealt with. Yeah. And the point is the important stuff, you just mention the space. Hey guys, this is, yeah, this needs urgent attention. If we get something going on, let's say an interruption to service or something like that, I can tell the moment I log on the hormone in the morning because there'll be 137 notifications and everyone in the company is kind of jumping in and saying, oh, have we tried this and I've done that, et cetera, et cetera. So the concept of swarming, the concept of doing stuff just to prioritize correctly, you still need some semblance of order and structure underneath it but it's not the semblance of, of, of order that we've seen implemented in IT organizations where it's basically by the book, incident problem change, et cetera. And all, of that, all of that stuff has its place, but it should be a little bit light touch. Yeah, good. Yeah, I think we've got a visitor, but I think the visitor's just left. Ah, that's my wife, slowly sneaking stuff from her table. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I like that style. I like that style. <laughs> She works in here too, so. Uh. Okay, no, that's good. Well, it's, it's been a pleasure um, to, to chat over, over the last few sessions. Um, also in the publication, I think at the end, it mentions in the Smart Guide, some further reading material as well from Harvard, Deloitte, Sophie University, and from Hornbill as well. So I, I'm certainly gonna be looking at that. And, and hopefully the guys uh, will get a chance to, to download that as well, the people who are listening to this, um, and have a good read too. So Pat, it's been great. Thank you very much indeed. I'm, I'm sure we'll get another chance to do one of these again at some point. Um, so thank you for joining us. Thanks to everybody for listening. Thanks a lot.
and we'll see you really soon. Yeah, thanks. thanks very much.